I am stuck in RuneScape's new continent, Valamor. I have no items, I have no money, and all I have in the bank is Dizana's Quiver. I have to rebuild solely from making gold in these new lands. And the locals will set me free once I prove myself in RuneScape's new hardest challenge, the Colosseum. Just a quiver and a dream. And what better way to explore Valamore than to start with absolutely nothing and build my way up. Unlike any new release, there is definitely money to be made here. I love how we arrived in the land of Valamore and instantly just start stealing from absolutely everybody, hunting their animals. We must be pretty hated. I'm just a humble adventurer, down on his luck. You can call me Robin Hood with this quiver, stealing from the rich and giving it to myself while all my billions are stored in offshore accounts. Not exactly sure that's how the story goes. I just needed some starter GP and one or two valuables, or 96 of them. One of the perks of completing the Colosseum is that you unlock the glory system in its entirety and you receive all the status benefits. The bank, respawn, teleport, herb patch, emote, and what I'm interested here is an improved price for stolen goods. An improved price for these valuables, you say? I mean, clearly it's not that improved, but I only needed a few K anyway. For my first money maker, I just need a teasing stick, an axe, and a stamina. And here we are, the Avium Savannah. And while I make my way over here, let me check out a brand new game. AFK Journey, which just released a couple of days ago on the 27th of March, and is now available on iOS, Android, and PC via the official website. The game is free to play, and despite the name, it's not just an idle game game. It's an ethereal fantasy RPG with some innovative new features. AFK Journey has really cool distinctive visuals, in-depth character customization, intricate game mechanics, and an added dimension with PC compatible side-scrolling elements. You play as Merlin, embarking on a fantasy quest, gathering heroes across six races, and formulating winning tactics with different teams. Explore huge diverse maps, solve fun puzzles, and meet intriguing NPCs with relaxed one-handed gameplay. The beloved AFK Arena heroes of old make a return, but in AFK Journey, you'll have added equipment resonance so you can make even more AFK gains. On release, I'll be giving it away over 40 free heroes to collect, including ethics, so you can get tactical with diverse battle strategies. You get these through gradual distribution and by engaging in events. With a 7-day login, players can receive 200 plus free pulls. So use my CD key AFK Journey 88 to get 100 diamonds and 18,888 gold coins. Download AFK Journey today through the link in the description. To make money, we are going hunting in the avium savannah, set the deadfall trap, tease the sunlight antelope, and I'm gonna slay this population into extinction. Bit sad. But when you dismantle the traps, you get Sunfire Splinters, which are very expensive right now. They're over 1k each. That's 6k for trapping one antelope. Gonna be making some money today. Add the meat, horns, and fur. Poaching is just great money. I actually think this is gonna be faster if I just buy the logs and bank every time. I bought some furs to streamline the process. The item with the most diabolical name in RuneScape. I just want to test this out for an hour and just see how much GP I can make. First inventory took just under five Five minutes? That's actually pretty good for 98 splinters, all these fur and meats. Fill up with logs and I go straight back. I need to empty out the pouches. That's the reason why I'm banking here for money. And I need to carry the logs. Not gonna lie, I've quite enjoyed min-maxing the destruction of the local antelope population. Uh, the final antelope, just over an hour. The main source of income is from the Sunfire Splinters, which is still over a mill. The furs, the everything else comes out to be, if this is correct on the GA, it's looking good. For one hour, for starting with nothing, 1.6 mil, we'll see what it actually sells for. How much do I get back? 1.6 mil, it's accurate, okay, I like that. For the next method, we are staying on trend with Hunter, but first I want to buy a skill cape for 99k and give it the ability to teleport to the Hunter Guild. So where does this teleport actually take me? It puts me right in the center, which is pretty close to a bank. Almost like a budget crafting cave, that's pretty cool. I'm going from one set of antelopes to another. Moonlight antelopes are at a higher level, so their meats and horns are so much more valuable. All right, my full inventory done, full pouch done, and all the moonlight vaults as well. How much does a big inventory come out to be? 284k, okay, that's not actually as much as I thought. I think the Sunfire antelopes are better, so we'll move on. My next method is a weird one, but a take on an old classic of shop method. In this shop within the Hunter Guild, I can purchase Jaguar fur 
fur for 104 coins, and this is pretty much the only place to get this fur in the game. You can go kill jaguars, but that's pretty slow. There also is another new item called Mixed Hide Base, which currently sells for 11.7k, and I'm going to buy a few of these per world until they get ridiculously priced. Fill the fur pouch up as well. Wait... <laughs> Jaguar fur doesn't go in the fur pouch. Seems like an oversight. Not too bad. It's not like the bank is far away. Now, the reason these ingredients are in demand is because it's how you make mixed hide, a new type of armor. A cape, boots, top, bottom, and they're actually quite good for the mid game. Right, I'm out of money. 6k left. All the mixed hides and Jaguar furs bought. The mixed hide boots give plus 5 range attack bonus and plus 2 strength bonus. Like a hybrid of snakeskin and climbing boots, but better. Get your toes on show. Oh wow, the cape looks pretty interesting. You got a dead animal hanging off your back. The cape gives range bonus and strength bonus, which is interesting for a cape. If you don't have a fire cape, this is for you. I was going to show you how to make it, but the stuff literally isn't buying. That's why it's so expensive right now. Let's do another round of buying the clothes. We're in decent profit though. This idiot doesn't know that he can get so much more money for his hides if he just goes to the grand exchange, you fool. I'm gonna buy a bunch more and then I think make my own stuff and chuck it on the G. All right, that's it. I'm fully invested into hides again. All right, here we go then. The hide production line in action. Let's start off making some capes. This is the full set. It's all a combination of melee strength and ranged attack bonus. And I've probably just made most of the sets in the game, to be honest. All right, quick price check on everything. In the 20Ks, right. I'm going to sell everything for 20K. The tops are not profit for some reason. I shouldn't have made those. I think I basically run this market right now. I'm the hide master. Okay, some of them have sold at least. They might take a while. Oh, my cash is tied up in here. So I've only got 600K. I think I'm going to do an hour of buying Jaguar furs. Business is booming and the Wolf of Wallamore. 498 Jaguar furs in just over half an hour's work. But are things selling in the Grand Exchange? Some things are selling. The tops are still in the bin, but these are ticking along nicely okay and i'm gonna sell all these for 5k each hopefully they'll i stopped early because there's no way someone's buying all of these are they that's pretty good that's pretty good 1.8 mil yeah nearly 6k each and 3.4k each as for this stuff i think it's time for bed might have left these things in for a while surely they've all sold though surely okay that's good that most of them have sold for a really nice price that 20k is a lot of profit let's collect that 6.8 mil i'm up to now right i'm just gonna dump the rest in that is absolutely fine over 7 mil from running the mixed hide business i think i got out just at the right time it's very nice though it leaves me with money to invest investing into a bit of a setup here time to start putting this to work part two fully spent the budget ready for my next money maker we're going to the coliseum here i can actually make some very very good money with this humble setup on wave one of the coliseum you're always guaranteed to get 100 some fire splinters which are over 100k but what if you just sat here and farmed the first wave of the coliseum over and over surely it's pretty good money per hour once you get to the end of wave one you can just sit out and claim your lose forfeit the run and the chest falls down we can take out our sunfire splinters go out reset and rinse and repeat this all over again even my stats get recharged i'm going to choose blasphemy on the start it's 20 percent extra prayer drain which makes no difference when i'm getting all my stats back anyway we're going to barrage the center of the three musketeers get on the serpent shaman with my blowpipe and every time i'm hitting these guys i'm max hitting them so it's super duper easy now let's send this for an hour and see how much money i make i think it's going to be one of the best methods in the game currently I've actually found this very satisfying, lining up the last eight of the DDS spec to speed run the wave. Look at this guy. A fairy with a score to settle. One hour up, and I have managed to claim myself 7,200 Sunfire Splinters. One thing to note is, if you do this, you are using up your discounted deaths on the Colosseum. As soon as you have more than 100 waves completed, your death fee is 500k, rather than 125k. However, the money is very good in the short term. Let's go sell these. So loot from one 
power, the Sunfire Splinters go in 6.3 mil minor supply cost. Let's call it 6 mil in one hour from a very entry level bare bones PVM method. I think I've got Stockholm Syndrome. I just want to do this some more. Nothing like being a capitalist pawn for rich players to charge their quiver. Besides, I need a couple more mil for my next project. Right, I think that is enough. I can't imagine these stay this price forever, but for now, oh my god, the money is nice. Right, we're up to a 16 mil net worth right now. So I'm going to do some more investing in Valmore items. Moonlight Moths. Going to buy 2k Moonlights for 700 each. And let's do the Sunlights for 750 as well. I'm also going to need the cheapest of meats. Raw Pyrefoxes for 250 each. Let's get 4,000 of those. The Moths should slow by. The buy limits are a bit off, so I'm going to leave these in for a while while I've got things to do. The combo price of these is actually about 1k right now. Any Hunter meat can be used with a Moth to make a moth mix. I believe this one heals hit points and stats as well. As you can see, my brew reduction disappeared and I healed eight hit points. As for the moonlight moth mix, it's two doses and it heals 22 prayer points. They also have an area effect, which means you can aid up to three people in adjacent tiles to you. It's just a 13-13 skill where I can just put my legs on the desk and relax for a bit. I just noticed they're leaving clue scrolls hanging around on the tables here in this bank. I could easily, my character could easily swipe those off. Little money pouch over there as well. Instead, they watched me mash meat into moths all day. The supply costs for these mixes were about 1k each. The problem is with these new items, no one knows they exist. Like, this is a really cheap prayer potion. This is like a two dose prayer pot for 2.4k. A real prayer potion is 9k, so it's so much more economical to use these right now. Guys, please buy them. We got some sales making good margins. All right, hopefully they've sold. Oh, look at that. A tidy profit. We are in the money. 13 million in cash. Can sell off the rest of my stuff, raise some funds for the next activity. Right, there we go, up to 20 mil cash. For my next money maker, we're heading to the Stonecutter Outpost. Now, this money maker isn't explicitly exclusive to Valamore. There is a stonemason shop for the first time outside of Keldegrim. And when the price is right, you can sell these construction supplies for a very nice profit. You just need the cash stack to be able to make it work. A marble block is 325k in the shop and a gold leaf is 130k. That's what I'm going to be concentrating on first. Going to buy two blocks per world and two leaves leaves per world. There we are, full inventory. I can actually do a couple with this cash stack, which is quite nice. All right, the cash is gone and we should be able to sell these for a tidy profit. 340k purchased for less than that. Okay, nice. And these, let's go 135k, bought them for 130 and they sold as well. How much did we make there? One mil in basically no time at all. Okay, I'm starting a timer. How long does it take for me to spend this money? Right, that's all the money spent. How long was that? Just over 10 minutes. Okay. We started on 21.3 mil and 10 minutes later, I'm on 22.4 mil. That's about, what, 5 mil, 6 mil an hour? That's really good. Guess who's back? Money. Another day, another day. I can actually buy magic stones as well for 975. And they do sell a profit, but my cash tag would get depleted too fast. That I think it would be less GP per hour. 36 minutes. Oh, they didn't all sell then. Little no sell, right? Okay, I think this is my cue to hang up the boots here. Just make sure I get some profit out of the last couple. And there we go, 24 mil. A timeless money maker, but it is quite low volume, so you can't consistently do it. Right, it's time to start thinking about my Colosseum gear. And the second lot of clothes, you might be able to tell where I'm going to be headed. I can't be doing the Colosseum without an Infernal Cape, and it might be nice to take the quiver out for a spin, especially with the double bolts. Got a bit of a wacky setup going on, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Wait, why am I dragging darts all over the floor? Is this not behaving like an Avers? So apparently I had to bring the quiver to Aver to stick in a assembler inside of it. It saves ammo now, but it didn't use up my assembler. That's kind of weird. Okay, it looks like it works. I'm so used to the Colosseum modifier pop-up between waves now. The Inferno seems way easier after Colosseum. I presume I can't spec with both bolts at the same time. Yeah, it's taking down my diamond bolts, not my ruby bolts. <laughs> and then I swap in, and then the ruby bolts are active. Swapping the bolts feels a little precarious on Zook. There we go. A quiver Inferno cape. Using one to get the other of the best in-start capes. Sell some Inferno stuff, and then I'm going to reinvest into a melee setup. I'm a Moonlight Moth eater now to save on prayer points. Dragon Defender. All right, for the Colosseum, I'm going all in on the melee. I'm going to make myself a Blood Fury and a Tentacle Whip. 
and the secret weapon, the ancient mace. So this is the setup that I'm rocking. I've gone very hard into melee because the final boss is going to be the difference maker. Hopefully this set is going to be good enough. If not, then I'll be making money from the waves and I can just leave at any time. All right, here we go then. I'm picking blasphemy for the prayer drain and hopefully the ancient mace comes to save me. All right, it's time. The first ancient mace back. Boom. <laughs> prayer is restored. Blood bar garage on the melee as well. And this is why. Hey, you can call me a noob, but I still think freezing the minions gives you way more control. These days, I'm leaving the range minion alive. So I essentially have a recharge whenever I've got spec. Give me all the prayer back. Oh my god, what? Wait, it's only 27k to die. Oh, my gear's so cheap, so it's chill. What? Oh, there's 39 mil on the line now. I think I might just chug food and bruise. Oh, that's the bank doubler. Right, I'm eating. We're bailing on this run. Never in doubt. I don't know why the Coliseum just gives me the worst spawns whenever everything is on the line. Oh, survival. Oh, it's two mil on the next wave. I've got to claim this though, don't I? I'm claiming. I'm claiming. Oh, there it is. I shook it in. How much for this? 27 mil. Right, I'm up to 30 mil. And I can sell all this stuff as well. Oh, I'm still too broke to afford a Saradamine Godsword. The mace lives on. I'm actually not sure how to spend this 31 mil, to be honest. Going for a little Barrows upgrade here. I'm looking like some 2006 PK right now. All that Money and I didn't buy myself more runes like an idiot. The final wave. Don't know where my food went, but let's send it. I'm actually blood barraging the Fremenic that spawns. No, I just got giga ragged by the solar flare. Nah, I blew it. What is the timing on that? No, is the time different on this? You have me excited for a moment. I, the timing must be different on that. There's no way. Oh man. Oh, don't you just love charged weapons and armor so much? Who killing them in the UK? Everybody gonna say UK. Reluctantly, cause most of this press don't fuck with me. The stair one said, tell me, cool down, down. Don't act a fool now, now. Always act a fool, ow, ow. Ain't nothing new now, now. He crazy, I know what you're thinking. Rapping, I know what you're drinking. Rap singer, chain blinger. How on earth did I really just choke that? What am I doing? <laughs> am I doing? Oh, give me that, Krimmer. Get me out of here. Five mil loot as well to add to the total. A lovely 58 million loot built only using money makers in Valamore and the Coliseum completed. Quick gamble for the pet. Well, I still had fun. <laughs>